It's the first special guest show for What's Good Radio. I welcome in Eugene Faison, a.k.a. the Angry Knicks fan of YouTube fame, to get his thoughts on the New York Knicks' 2015-16 season, Kristaps Porzingis' possible Rookie of the Year campaign, whether Carmelo's wearing down and if he might leave town, and Phil Jackson's plan for the future, and also his first-hand look at why he says the Golden State Warriors will smash the Chicago Bulls' record of 72 wins. All this and more coming up on What's Good Radio, right now. You're listening to NGSC Sports Radio. What's really good? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to What's Good Radio, the weekly podcast where we try to find out what's really good in sports, entertainment, and more. Oh, good for you! Hosted by Jake Stanley and featuring Jordan Jones. Yeah, he's the guy up at Lifetime Fitness that hoops with sweatpants on. <laughs> Marcel Ayers. I, I hate the notion of people like, I'm not black, I have no color. Are you kidding me? Dan Meehan. Because you're not bad enough to go get yourself a kick-ass prospect, and you're not good enough to really win anything. And Montel Hardy. And even if he doesn't do a whole lot better than Covenant, I think we can pay anyone to go out and turn the ball over three times. This is What's, what's Good Radio. radio. Jake Stanley, a.k.a. Jelp, spider of the World Wide Web Slinger for What's Good Radio, and I am on with Eugene Faison, a.k.a. Billy the Angry Knicks fan. You've seen his stuff on YouTube. A couple years ago, he got a lot of play on Grantland. Shouts out to them, obviously. Unfortunately, that they were closed down by the gods, the powers that be at ESPN, another in the long line of great ESPN decisions. But really glad to have him on with us. He's going to talk Knicks basketball, being a Knicks fan in the heart of Pacers country. And uh, Kristaps Porzingis and his surprising play this season. So first off, how you doing, sir? Hey, man, I'm, I'm doing good, man. Thanks for reaching out. Oh, no problem. Okay, I got to ask, first of all, like I watched most of your videos. I still come back to that uh, to the Mike Woodson video just because it, it struck a chord with me. And... Um, <laughs> talking about compete competition and, and really really getting in there to play so obviously you're a passionate Knicks fan but a lot of those videos I think all those videos were shot in Indianapolis which anybody who's watched the winning time documentary knows that Knicks and Pacers have that rivalry going back away so what's that like being a Knicks fan in the heart of Pacers country uh, actually it's fun it's actually fun because these guys you know blue collar town I'm here because, you know, of course, I'm in the military. My job purposes have me here. And, but it's kind of fun, man, being like the villain amongst all these Pacer fans. You know, <laughs> that deep rivalry between the Pacers and Knicks. Every time the Knicks are in town, I'm at Banker's Life. I'm getting yelled at, but it, it, at the same time, it's all love. So it's kind of fun. Now, those last couple of years, Knicks games at, uh, at Banker's Life Fieldhouse haven't been that good for you. Do the Pacers fans, are they cool, or do they kind of give it to you like a little bit a little bit worse than, than they should? Oh, it's both. It's, bo- it's 50-50. It's 50-50. <laughs> uh, you know, you got, you, got, you got guys, like, you know, you got Pacers fans like Knicks fans. They remember the robbery from back in the 90s and everything. And, you know, it's, basketball is good when you have those two teams like the, like the rivalry they had in the 90s, that's good and relevant again. And it's good for the sport, good for basketball, it's good for the fans. Like I said, man, Indianapolis, blue-collar town, these guys are passionate about their about their Pacers, man. And, you know, playoffs a couple of years ago, I was there at game six, screaming, yelling, talking all kind of stuff. And, you know, we went on a nice little run until, you know, uh, Hibbert met Melo at the rim. And after that, I just kind of sat down in my chair for like the last five minutes of that of our season. And, you know, Pacer fans remember me. So every time I go to Bengals Life, they're still laughing at me. The way they remember me. It's all <laughs> love, though, back and forth. Now, I've been checking uh, checking your YouTube account, and I noticed it might just be to do with this season, but you moved away mm-hmm. from the Knicks a little bit. And uh, I know you did a couple videos on the Pacers a couple years ago just after the regular mm-hmm. season for the Knicks ended. Are you putting up anything lately? Or are you still going with it? Um, I haven't really been 
angry, angry. You know, I haven't really put. I need. I'm. I'm. I'm going to get back into the videos. A lot of people have been asking about the videos, but I haven't really been angry like years past because of the direction, the effort, is, is, um, and what I see in with the team. But yes, I am going to get back into the videos. The people have been asking for the videos, and you know, uh, I got. I got to keep going with this little, this journey. So. The videos will be coming back. No, for sure, man. And I've been looking forward to it, too, because, I mean, the stuff you talk about with the Pacers, the stuff you talk about with the Knicks, you know basketball, I can tell. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Love it. Talking about the direction that the Knicks are taking, you put up the video about you going to the draft. You were there at the, with the Knicks Nation at the draft up in the second deck there, Radio City. And mm -hmm. when David Stern called out Christoph Porzingis' name, you could tell – that everybody was, I mean, from disappointed to just outright upset. And honestly, me, I was, I, I saw it, but I didn't think it was the right move. Now we're in, we're in a quarter of the way through the season. He's averaging 14, almost 15 points, just under nine rebounds, just under two blocks a game, right up there with Carl Anthony Towns and with uh, Jalil Okafor. And it's probably right now, if you had to end the season, it will be it will be KAT and Porzingis for Rookie of the Year. What are you seeing his play? Well, first off, I got to get something off. Not actually off my chest, but because, I, like I said, I did the video when we were there at the Barclays, you know. I kind of knew, like, right before Silver came out there and said the pick, I knew uh, right when the number three pick came out, when uh, um, Okafor was announced, I saw on my Twitter that, you know, the Knicks were, gonna, in fact, going to draft Porzingis. And, right, I made the video, but here's the thing. Everybody was like, you guys boo this kid, you boo this kid. The Knicks fans really didn't boo the kid. They boo the decision. Because any NBA fan knows, especially all Knicks fans, we don't have a good history of drafting European players. And nobody's going to be real hyped. For, for, you know, a kid that you've never seen before. It is like, you know, give him a chance, give him a chance. But, you know, that's just, it's just, it is what it is. Nobody's going to be happy over somebody they don't know. So we booed the decision. And, you know, of course it felt like, you know, we was booing him. And it is what it is. But I have to tell you, I'm humbled. I'm ecstatic. And I felt like we got the steal of the draft as far as the top four, four picks of the draft or whatever. Porzingis is like he he's first off, man. His parent he he has a good upbringing because he's a humble young man. That's testament to his parents. Okay. The kid the kid is he, he he like he has no fear in him. And as Nick fans, we should applaud him because he wanted to come to New York. You know, and he was he was he was selling that he wants to come here. He wants to accept the challenge. And right now, he has stepped up to the plate like any other rookie we haven't seen in a long, long time in the NBA. 7-3, uh, very versatile, soft hands, nice jumper, inside. He has to work on his fouls. You know, he gets in foul trouble from time to time. But, uh, I mean, he's a real solid player. And it looks he's the kind of player that can take a lot of load off Carmelo as you know, when Carmelo gets the ball, it's a lot of one-on-one -on -one ball, and and you know the Knicks in the past used to look at him to to put buckets, uh, put points on the scoreboard. We don't have that now, and and the Porzingis, along with a follow, I think is really helping Carmelo out, and and that's what I see with the young man right now, man. But he just looks flawless, and he has no fear, and I think he's just really, I think he's just enjoying the moment right now. And honestly, that's that's a lot to say because New York. Always, you know, it's a spotlight town. It's not the easiest place to play, especially for a rookie, especially for a rookie with a lot of expectations placed upon him. And like you said, he's handling the pressure. Well, a 19-year-old really well. rookie, not even from the United States, and it's, it, it, it says a lot. True, true. I mean, this is like, it's probably not his first time to the country, obviously, but it's his first time living right. here and in a city like New York where you can get into a lot of trouble real quick. 
It seems like he's handling very well. And I, I noticed, I checked his stats earlier. His fouls were, I think he was at four fouls a game, and that's dropped to three. And that was about, a, that's in a month's time. So playing the position he's playing, that's a big thing to see. Now, Absolutely. For Carmelo, he right now, I, I, he's carrying a lot of the load too. And I checked his stats as well. 21 and a half, seven boards, three assists. The assists are, I think, highest in a couple of years. But it's his. This is a career low field goal percentage for him, and his third lowest points per game, lowest since 2004-2005. Is he? He's only 31, but is he wearing down, or is he, is he carrying too much of it? Since it's you know it's him, Przingis, and then you got a Flalo, Calderon, some kind of mid-level players around him. Uh-huh. Um, I don't think he's wearing. I mean, he's 31. I mean, everybody's going to start. You know declining a little bit in their game. Um, but I think he's still trying to get his legs up under him as far as that knee surgery that he had last year. Um, and it, it takes a while to have knee surgery. And it takes a while to, you know, get get your legs back up under you the way you was prior to the injury. Um, but I also think he's trying to change up his game a little bit as well. Because, like I said, he doesn't have to carry the load as much as he used to in years past. Um you know, he's trying, as you see, his assists are up. He's still rebounding a high margin. And, you know, he doesn't, I, he, yes, he doesn't have his legs up under him, but at the same time, he, he's not efficient. And he needs to get back to that. Probably more post moves or, or more playing in the post, start relying on his jumpers a lot, and that's affecting his numbers. And it's also affecting the team play as well because, I mean, the team is going to go as far as Carmelo goes. So, hopefully we can get better early part of December. But I think this three-game road trip right here is going to tell a lot about this team. Now, who's on that road trip? I'm sorry? Who do you have on that road trip? Oh, well, I th- uh, tonight is Utah, Phoenix, and Sacramento, I believe. Okay. So, it's three running, three young teams, three running teams, especially your Phoenix and Sacramento team with Rondo looking like he has a nice little resurgence out there. So, I mean, it's going to tell a lot. The Knicks are on a bad road team this year, but with our recent struggles, losing six out of eight, uh, I, think, I think this three-game road trip is going to really show the identity of this team. Now, if you had to look at the team right now and make a judgment call, and I think I haven't been able to see TNT in the last couple of weeks, but I know the guys were a little, little bit higher on New York this year than they have been previous years, obviously. If you had to look at the team today, would you say that they could make the playoffs in the East the way it is this year? I said they, they could. They could. Um, you know, right now, you know, there's like 10 teams in the East right now with a, a, above 500 records. Right. So it's like a, it's a, lot, of, it's a lot of parity. And the Knicks are only two games below 500 themselves with 10 wins. The Knicks could be a playoff team, but they have to play consistent. And right now they're kind of like they're Jekyll and Hyde. Like they'll give us two great ga- two great games, and then we'll have three mediocre games. You know, there's no consistency right now. There's no sense of urgency from these guys, and it's like you see a lot of sense of urgency from this team when they're down by double digits in the fourth quarter, as opposed to coming out with the, coming out uh, into the game with that same sense of urgency for all four quarters. So they have to be consistent. And that's like players and coaches as well. With the Przingis draft pick and it being 2016 next year, free agents are going to hit the market. What do you think Phil's plan is? Is he going to try and go after somebody big name? Is Carmelo up on the block, do you think? What's Phil's, what's Phil's plan for the going forward for the future? I don't think Carmelo's on the block. I mean, he has no trade clause. We paid him all this money five years. I know a lot of Nick fans. They're mad at Carmelo for some reason. I don't understand. A lot of Knicks fans are not Melo fans, and I'm not understanding why. Because this year, since he's been in New York, is the very first time the team has been solely tri- built around him. You know, they tried to start a Mario Carmelo experiment. It, it just didn't work. It didn't work. And this is the very first year that Phil has tried to put it around him. Melo says he has bought in. He's always bought in Phil's plan. I don't really know who he will go after. I'm not really 
not one of those fans is going to jump on the you know the Kevin Gart, uh, Durant trade or you know free agent whatever. A lot of big superstars. Phil's never tried to build a super team, you know. Um, 